And now a KPIX5 original report with coronavirus infections once again on the rise. Contact tracing is even more critical to control the spread of the virus. A growing number of new apps are designed to help do that. Now, some are privately developed. Others are developed by governments. Well, here in the U.S., there are only four states using them as part of their pandemic strategy. But in other countries, they're getting very popular. That's it. That's all there is, is to it. Brett Hall just started using a contact tracing app for COVID-19 called Corona Warn, developed by the German government. I heard about it and downloaded it um, pretty quickly, actually, so on the, on the day that it was released officially. Brett's been living in Berlin for the past decade. He says downloading the app was voluntary. The more people that have it, the more effective it is. I felt it was something that I should do to, to help get back to a sense of normality quicker. Here's the way the app Brett is using and most others like it work. On your way through the day from home to work or exercise or shopping, it documents the digital encounter between two smartphones. If someone using the app tests positive for the coronavirus, they can notify others if they choose to. If you had contact with that person, the app will quickly inform you. Any contact is then held anonymous, so your d details are held anonymously on your phone and you only receive information. Corona Warren does not allow you to know who it is who's been infected or where you met them. Vice versa, the infected person cannot tell who's been informed. Most of the contact tracing apps are designed that way. However, it does not guarantee you privacy protection. So I think that there certainly are some privacy concerns. Quentin Palfrey heads the newly formed International Digital Accountability Council that analyzed privacy protocols on 108 COVID-19 related apps in 41 countries. 23 of them used specifically for contact tracing. In some instances, the apps didn't even have a privacy policy. That is actually required by the Google Play Store terms. There were other instances where there was a privacy policy, but it was clearly inadequate. One problem the research highlights, something called a permission. And when you download an app, sometimes you get a request, you know, is it okay if we look at your contacts? Um, is it okay if we read some of the data that's on your phone? Um, and that can be a gateway um, to uh, passing information uh, along to third parties. For instance, the Healthy Together contact tracing app used by the state of Utah asked for permission to read location and contacts. Other apps they reviewed asked only for location. The data you give to an app should relate to what you're getting out of the app. Researchers also found connections with third-party marketers were not always clearly spelled out. For example, North Dakota's app called Care19 was at first called out for its relationship with Foursquare, a marketing company. It now discloses that it uses Foursquare to determine nearby businesses that you may have visited. The app's developer told us Foursquare has agreed not to retain data. This privacy attorney says agreements are not a guarantee. If you think that the app that's supposed to keep you safe from a virus is going to sell you shoes the next day from a shoe store you walked by on your normal and your afternoon jog, you're not going to want to use it. Matthew Guariglia with the Electronic Frontier Foundation says there's also a security risk. Whenever you have a, a company or entity that is storing a vast amount of sensitive information, that that storage, that, that data is going to have a, a huge target on it. Researchers with the Digital Accountability Council found some apps, including the CDC's app, also sent transmissions that were not encrypted. That created a risk, a cybersecurity risk, um, that was both problematic in its own right at a time when the public's trust in CDC is critical. In general, though, the researchers found the apps do a lot to protect the privacy of users. The most secure apps reviewed were Private Kit and PathCheck GPS. We asked the council to review Brett's app, Corona Warn, for this story. Their verdict, without having tested it, a preliminary thumbs up. Back in Berlin, Brett Hall is so far happy with it, too. If it's for something as serious as this, then it's something I'm willing to, willing to accept. So California is currently not using a contact tracing app, but a spokesperson for the Department of Health did tell us that most of that work can be done by phone, text, email, even chat. 
So can we still use any of these apps in California if they're not technically in use here? Well, yeah, technically you could use the app, but, you know, it's not going to be very effective. How effective it is depends on the numbers. A lot of people would also have to have that app on their phones, mm -hmm. and right now we're just not there yet. By the way, Germany's Corona Warn app, it's based on what's called decentralized framework developed by Apple and Google. The information is kept on your phone. Other apps have centralized models that store data on a server, and they give the health departments more information. We're looking into that debate as well. We'll keep you posted on what we learn. Fascinating stuff. All right, Alan, thank you.